Okay, guys, so here's the second video I'm making in response to that, the uh, immigration thing. So I had just stopped talking about the three myths there if immigrants are taking and actually depressing our um, wages, and I went into about what they do to the economy there. So yeah, George, Bar George Bar Barbara Hose is actually an economist out there who is very into immigration, and he's made several articles about illegal immigration to the country. And his estimates as say that about, like I said, $20 billion were added to the economy a couple years ago, and nowadays it should be about $36 billion. This is something that economists across the board they agree with, that immigrants do not cause a harm to our job growth, our wage depressions, or even just the economy in general. Now, this is also, this is also a very, very, very small fraction of job or of wealth growth in the United States compared to the $13 trillion economy that we have. You know, $20 billion or $36 billion is a fraction amongst that. So it's not really noticed. But it is, there's nowhere in the world that is declared that it is an actual decrease upon the economy. So the next few things that we were talking about was basically that, you know, immigrants that are going to come into this country are going to be demanding more welfare. And a study done, hold on a second here, guys, let me find it real quick. And a study done by uh, the university, I think it was of Harvard here. They had said, American Defense, Pass, okay, save, okay, so talking about a uh, welfare system, the idea that immigration, and this is kind of what I was talking about with in my essay, I was talking about crime, that they would increase levels of crime here. So you have to forgive me if this is a little bit out of context, but the idea that immigration causes crime finds itself in the same problem. And I was talking about decrease of jobs here. First, immigrants coming into America are usually generally hard workers who left their homeland to benefit themselves. And for the most part, have high values and incentives to stay in the United States. So a illegal immigrant who comes to the United States, if their goal is to commit levels of crime or their goal is to get on the welfare system, generally they wouldn't usually stay at home and do that there. Most of the immigrants that we have coming to the United States are actually seeing them trying to benefit themselves in some poor way because they believe that, that moving here, they're going to have a better chance at getting a better life here. So generally speaking, if a, let's say for instance, a Haitian moves to the United States, his income will instantly shoot up a thousand percent. And that's not even on just doing basic minimum wage stuff. Um, According to Sergei Ganolova, I think it's some sort of Russian thing, uh, it is said that it is common that immigrants will settle in poor, depressed neighborhoods and basically through here. And he says that in recent decades, researchers working with empirical data from the United States, Canada, and Australia have come around to the view that immigration usually lowers the relative level of crime or leaves it substantially unchanged. So addressing those three points there, they do not take our jobs, they do not depress wages, and they do not have a net drain to the economy, and they also do not cause crime. So when we talk about welfare spending and the refugees and just illegal immigrants in general, if my point about the baby scenario is that immigrants coming to the country, and I guess I was making this par comparison based upon my past knowledge of immigration there, they come into this country, generally speaking, they have a net benefit to the country. And my point was not that we should have population control, but that an immigrant coming to the country, like I said, is going to have a net benefit to us, about $36 billion. Whereas a baby is going to be nothing. He's just a dependent for 18 months, and that's or 18 years. That's what my point was. It was not that we should have population control or that was a little bit disingenuous. That was actually my point there. Um, so the subsidization of immigrants, now I'm probably, you could probably go ahead and just prove me on this. I don't think, actually, no, I can take that back. Probably California has it. We are not supposed to give out any form of welfare to immigrants at all. That's something that the United States has that law. Now, if they do that, that is something that they should not do. But obviously, you know, Uncle Sam and Obama, as Clive according to Econ says, they're going to do whatever they want to do. Um, but generally speaking, though, if we look through the past 60 years, what has happened to our country? It hasn't been something of, oh, hey, we had a whole lot of people come in here, so the welfare system is getting larger, larger, larger. Welfare system, you could argue that it's getting larger because of population, but it could also be getting larger because the government has no checks on how much it is spending or what the actual um, reign is of its power. It's just giving out more and more money to people and giving it out like crazy. That's what I would argue. It's not so much the population growing as it is uh, the government just being unable to control its spending. So an immigrant coming to the country is going to be no different in the past six years. We've had the baby boomers. We've had other forms of immigrants coming to the country. And the population has just shooted tremendously. So there, I don't really think there's an issue there where you would look and say that immigrants are going to cause a huge issue to the welfare system. And even then, a huge depression on the welfare system is going to cause even further closing or further um, close that gap further to the United States government collapsing, which is as an end cap should be something that we kind of look forward to. But you're going to go in there and say, I have a huge issue with this. You're going to say that because immigrants are going to use more welfare, we should ban them from the ability to move to the country. That's kind of like saying that because the government's screwing up, we should take their rights. Do you not see that? 
I don't know, that came across a little bit rude, but it's like, do you not see that where I'm coming from on that one? It's just like, you can't take away people's rights because someone else is screwing something up. I don't care if it causes more national debt. That is something that we should fix. Let them come as they please. They will actually benefit our economy. Uh, on the refugees there about bringing them culture and everything through here, generally speaking, I'm on the same thing. We shouldn't give them welfare or anything like that. If they want to move here, though, I quote Thomas Jefferson, my favorite person, as an inquoting, quote, our ancestors possessed a right which nature has given to all men of departing from a country in which stance, not choice, has placed them. Lost my place there. <laughs> of going in quest of new habitations and of their establishing new societies under such laws and regulations as to them shall seem more most likely to promote public happiness. And basically Thomas Jefferson came through and said that People have the right to move, basically, it's all he is saying, that because you are born in one certain country, it does not say that you have no ability to move somewhere else. And the idea that because we are, quote-unquote, American, we are the only ones with rights, um, if you haven't seen the movie Bridge of Spies, and I highly recommend you do it, it's an awesome movie by Tom Hanks, the Russian spy who is accused in there isn't given American rights from that judge, and that's a whole entire good point in that entire movie. We should not be looking at these refugees and saying, hey, let's not give them American rights just because they were born in some other part of the country. Um, obviously, there, I agree with you, we shouldn't give them welfare, but it's not something that we should restrict them from doing, and it's not something that's going to be a net drain on the economy at all. There is no proof of that. The only thing you could say is that they're going to cause a boom to the economy, which is going to create more taxable income, and that they might also increase the welfare spending. But those two things are not going to be as huge of a deal as what you're trying to make them out to be. Um, I think that was really all I had to kind of rebuttal against that a little bit. Yeah. I hope so, because I kind of let that video go on and I started ranting. And I kind of lost my track of my place there. <laughs> so hold on a second here. Um, yeah, I guess I'll point out one more thing here. If you want to make an example to people you're arguing this about what kind of jobs they take, uh, one of my paragraphs in this essay was, when immigrants come into the country and take jobs, they are normally taking jobs that Americans will not take. For instance, Arizona has lettuce crops that have been picked every year by Mexican immigrants for, um, was picked by Mexican immigrants for the year 2010. In the heated political battle on the border, farmers had lost workers and had to leave almost $1 billion of lettuce on the ground to rot. Most of the American critics about that, though they had said that if the farmers had just increased their wages, most likely Americans would have come in and picked the crop for them. But as Dr. Powell, who was one of the economists I quoted in this, been Benjamin Powell, um, points out that if they had increased their wages, they would have lost more money just than if they had just left the crop on the ground to rot because it was not worth for them to actually pick it. So we had immigrants come in. Those jobs have been something that was actually created and not something that displaced someone else. They were jobs that didn't exist because the wage was too high or would have been too high. So, I mean, those are kind of an example going back and forth between the two. There are several videos from LearnLiberty.com that I used in my essay to kind of make it and draft it out for the little rough edition I gave you there. Uh, by the way, if you are a starting libertarian or starting anarcho-capitalist and you want to learn more about economics, LearnLiberty.com or .org, I believe is what they are. They also have a YouTube channel, which is plain Learn Liberty. They are by far the easiest university or easiest kind of thing where they actually have economists from different universities come in and explain parts of economics or the idea of freedom and liberty. Recommend them highly. I've been using them about two years here now. But I will go through on my next couple videos that you'll see after this. I will also go in and kind of republish and post those videos I watched so you can watch them and learn a little bit about yourself here. So this is Let's Ban Just this is, has been Let's Just Ban Government who's been making a ridiculously long video tonight. I hope you guys have a good day. Take care. Good night. It is like 1.14 in the morning. I am a nerd beyond all belief. Happy night, guys.